In this video, we will be going over the relationship between launch azimuth, orbital inclination, and launch site latitude for rocket trajectories. We'll start by defining the launch azimuth angle and its constraints based on local geography with two-dimensional and three-dimensional visualizations. Then we'll go over the equation of the relationship between inclination, azimuth, and latitude for different launch sites around the world. And finally, we will go into the intuition behind why a rocket cannot directly launch into an orbital inclination that is lower than its launch site latitude with two explanations. First, using the linear algebra concept that two three-dimensional vectors span a two-dimensional plane, and second, with gravitational potential and kinetic energy. This is the sixth video in this rocket trajectory series, and if you haven't seen it already on this channel, I also have over 60 videos on orbital mechanics with Python, the space engineering podcast, and videos in Spanish. So we'll start with the definition of the launch azimuth angle, which is defined as the angle from the local north vector to the rocket flight path measured clockwise. So here in the Cape Canaveral launch, we are looking at a launch azimuth angle of around 45 degrees. And for the Vandenberg Space Force Base, the launch azimuth is right on the edge of the allowable value at around 140 degrees. Launch sites have constraints on their launch azimuth angles based on their surrounding geography. So for example, at Cape Canaveral, you cannot launch north or west since the rocket would be flying over populated areas. Therefore, Cape Canaveral launches are restricted to launch azimuths between 35 and 120 degrees. And similar to Vandenberg, rockets cannot launch north or east. And the limit to the southeast makes sure that the rockets don't fly directly over Los Angeles. But under the right lighting conditions, the launches will still be visible from LA. Here's a three-dimensional representation of the launch azimuth angles, where the green trajectory is on a 30-degree launch azimuth trajectory, the blue is 90 degrees, which is due east, and the white is on 120 degrees. And using the grid lines, we can see that the due east launch does not remain on the east grid line since Earth gravity is pulling it south, and we'll be going deeper into these dynamics in this video. Now we'll get into the mathematical relationship between orbital inclination, launch azimuth, and launch site latitude, which is represented by this equation. The plot on the bottom left illustrates this equation where we take the inverse cosine of both sides of the equation to get orbital inclination angle as a function of launch azimuth for different launch sites around the world. So for now, we'll focus on the left side of the plot, which is showing inclinations less than 90 degrees and launch azimuths less than 180 degrees. And the first thing to note is that in each of these graphs, they have a minimum that is exactly equal to the launch site latitude coordinates. So this means that the minimum inclination that a rocket can directly launch to is equal to the latitude coordinate of where it launched from. The second value to notice is that the minimums occur at a launch azimuth of 90 degrees, which is launching due east. And we'll go over the intuition as to why the minimum happens when launching due east. But for now, it's just important to understand what these values are saying. The next two values to observe are for when the orbital inclination is equal to 90 degrees, which happens when launch azimuths are equal to 0 or 180 degrees, which would be launching due north or due south. And we can visualize this with the 3D plot on the right, that if we launch due north from Cape Canaveral, we would end up going over the North Pole. And this graph is flipped for launch azimuths greater than 180 degrees because these launches would result in retrograde orbits, which excluding sun-synchronous orbits launches are rare in practice. However, it's worth noting that there is a maximum to the orbital inclinations at 270 degrees launch azimuth, which corresponds to the same orbital inclination as the minimum values except in retrograde and launching due west. Now we'll get into the intuition behind why the minimum inclination is equal to the launch site latitude, and here we'll go over the intuition in 3D, and next we'll take a look at specific mechanical energy. So here we have four different rocket trajectories around Earth, each with different launch azimuth angles, where we can see that they result in different orbital inclinations. And the blue trajectory here is the due east trajectory, resulting in the minimum inclination. From linear algebra, we know that we can represent a two-dimensional plane with a three-dimensional vector that is perpendicular to that plane. And we can also think of this perpendicular vector as a vector that is perpendicular to two linearly independent vectors that are lying on that two-dimensional plane. 
In our case, those two vectors are one, the vector pointing from the center of the Earth to the Earth launch site, which is represented with the pink vector here, and the vector pointing from the center of the Earth to where the trajectory crosses through the equatorial plane, labeled here as zero crossings. And the plane that those two vectors span is the orbital plane. So since the center of the orbit is a geometric center of the Earth, assuming two-body dynamics, no matter where you start on the surface of the Earth, you will always be crossing through Earth's equatorial plane. So those two vectors will always be defined and will always define the orbit that the rocket is launching to. So here we have these trajectories all crossing Earth's equatorial plane in different places, resulting in different orbital planes. But no matter where you cross the equator, it cannot result with an orbital plane that has a smaller inclination value than the latitude launch site. And in the next slide, we'll be going over why east launches will result in the minimum inclination. But hopefully this 3D explanation will help you understand the relationship between orbital inclination and launch site latitude. So now we'll get into why launching east results in a minimum inclination, and we'll be doing so by examining the specific mechanical energy of the rocket, which is composed of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy only in the Z direction because the Z component of the position represents how far the rocket is from Earth's equatorial plane, and velocity in the Z direction heavily influences the orbital inclination. So from high school physics, we can recall that the gravitational potential energy is a function of how far you are away from the zero potential. So in the linear motion case, this is the height of an object above some floor that defines zero, which is shown in the simple diagram here. And in our case, this is the Z component of the position vector of the rocket launch site with respect to the center of the Earth. And then we can also recall that kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared, but in the case of orbital mechanics, we actually mean specific mechanical energy, where we disregard the mass of the spacecraft. So before the rocket launches, it has some z position value, which is a distance from the launch site to the equatorial plane, and no velocity in the z axis. And that's even if we consider the Earth spinning, because all points on Earth's surface only have velocity in the xy equatorial plane, and not in the z direction, or the polar direction. So this means that the rocket has some amount of gravitational potential in the Z and no kinetic energy in the Z. So if you launch directly east, thus increasing the magnitude of your velocity vector in the XY plane, that does not add any energy to the Z. You still have only gravitational potential in the Z. However, if you launch at the azimuth of, say, 60 degrees, as is shown here in the green, you are gaining velocity in the z direction, which is proportional to kinetic energy, and you're also gaining potential energy in the z. Similarly, if you launch at 120 degrees, which is in the southeast direction, you are gaining kinetic energy in the z from the thrusting, and you're also falling towards the equator, thus overall increasing your total energy in the z. Therefore, it is only if your thrust vector is in the equatorial plane that you will not gain any kinetic energy in the z direction from that thrust. But in practice, you cannot just keep thrusting along the equatorial plane, but this concept applies to the pitch over maneuver. So on the right are plots of position in the z and velocity in the z. So for velocity, we'll notice that all three are initially going in the positive direction. Since the beginning of the trajectory is a vertical profile and a subsequent pitch over maneuver, which are close to the zenith direction, which in this case has a positive z component. But once a rocket gets going on the gravity turn, as expected, we see the 120 degree azimuth trajectory velocity going negative, which is towards the equator, as can be seen in the 3D plot. And same with the due east launch, and the 60 degree is getting more positive, as is expected. And as the rockets get into their final orbits, we see that the maximum and minimums for both the position and the velocity of the east launch, which is in blue, are smaller than those for the other two azimuth launches. And note that these values don't have to be centered around zero because this is just the z component and not the norm of the vectors. And also note that the discontinuities in the velocity plots are for the different phases of the rocket launch, which is zenith, pitch over, gravity turn, state separation, coast, and another gravity turn. So the main takeaway from this is to notice that when we launch directly east, we have the minimum amplitude of position in the Z and velocity in the Z as compared to other launch azimuth trajectories.
In the next video, we'll be going over the inertial velocity of the rocket as it's sitting on the launch pad as a function of latitude of the launch site and why the magnitude of the velocity is higher the closer you are to the equator. So that's it for this video. So let me know if you have any questions or comments, if anything was confusing, and leave a like and a subscribe to stay up to date with the rest of the videos. And I'll see you in the next one.